Good evening, everyone. Tonight's topic, it's life after life. And one of the most interesting lectures that proved to many people in the last 25 years that the death is really not the last station in the life of people. Today, we're going to, based on our proofs, based on the Jewish world, the Torah, the written and the oral Torah, and based on the scientific world, which means parapsychologists that had researches in the last 25 years, we're going to use the information that they discover to prove what the Torah knew already 3,317 years ago, as it was given in Mount Sinai. Just when we start in the beginning of the Torah, we see the description of the creation of Adam. And God created Adam, the sent from the ground, and he blew a soul into his nostril, and then he became a, a living creature. In the book of Kohelet, King Solomon writes that when a person dies, the soul leaves first the body, and the spirit goes back to the master who gave the soul, and the person is unable to talk and unable to walk and so forth and so on. In the, in the oral Torah, we see a description of creation of man, which there are three partners in the creation of human being, which is God, his mother, and his father. The Torah describes who, who gives what to the creation of man. First, God and the father and the mother. The father gives the white and the, and the bones and the ligaments and the nails and the brain that in the head, the eye, the, the, the white inside the eye and the mother give the color, the redness of the skin and the flesh and the actual skin, the air, the black, the pupil of the eyes, and God gives the soul and the spirit and the image of the face, the ability to see, the ability to hear, the ability to talk and to walk, the intelligence and the wisdom. Once the time comes for the person to die, God takes his share, and what happens from this moment, the person is unable to walk and unable to talk. One of the 613 mitzvot in the Torah are you should not communicate in any way with the deceased people. And obviously, once God, the creator of life, comes and tells us do not communicate with the deceased people and don't ask them questions, we understand right away that it's possible even though we don't understand how to do it sometimes, but that means it's possible. And the next thing we understand right now is that those people are exist somewhere, which means there's a way to communicate with them. That means they, re they really never died. We see the body, that the body is dead, but we, don't, we have to understand right away that the actual soul is existing somewhere. In the book of Eo, which is a part of the Bible, this is what he writes. The flesh and the skin is my clothing and I'm covered with bones and ligaments. So who am I? If the Bible describes that Eov says like this, you covered me with the skin and the flesh and the bones and the ligaments, so who really am I? That means there's something spiritual that cover with this envelope. In the book of Isaiah, this is what it says. The human being that have a soul in his nostrils. As it described that when God created Adam, he blew this energy, what we, used, what we, we are calling a soul, into the nostrils of, the, of Adam, and he was able to start walking. The Gemara described the baby in his mother's womb in the period of nine months of the pregnancy, and this is the way it's described in the, written, in the oral Torah. What is the baby is like? He is folded, and there is a spiritual candle above his head, 
and is able to watch from one side of the world to the other side of the world. And there's an angel that teaching him the entire Torah in those period of nine months. And just when his time arrived to enter life, before he leaves his mother, comes the angel and hits him on his top lip and makes him forget all the Torah that he just learned. And now he comes to the world and in a period of 60, 70, 80 years that he's going to live here, he will have to work very, very hard to learn the Torah and to, and to remember what he learned. This is a description of a baby before he came out to this world. The student of the Ari Kadosh, Rabbi Chaim Vital, 500 years ago, all the, all the things that we know today about Kabbalah comes from his writing. And this is what he writes. The body of the person is not the real person. He is only a body, the flesh. When the Torah wants to speak about a person, the Torah speaks about the spiritual image. When the Torah wants to speak about the body, always God call it the skin, the flesh of the person. Which means it's two different things. There's a diamond and there's a box that you put the diamond in. Obviously the box is not as important as the diamond. Even though the way we live sometimes, we get an indication that we care about our body much more than our spiritual image, which is the soul. Most of the time it's because of ignorance, because we are not appreciating the value of our soul. As we continue, the Kabbalah continues to describe like this. The same way that when a person buys an outfit by the tailor, the tailor measures his body and he makes him a, a, a suit, the same way God made a suit to the soul, which is the actual body. The soul is the real person, and the body is the outfit that the soul was put in it. So there are some sources in the Torah describing what man is really all about. We're going now into the other side, which is the spiritual, it is the, the scientific world, and this is what we're going to see tonight. I'm going to use five different ways to prove scientifically that there is really life after death. The first way is clinical death, which means out of body experience. The second way to prove is seance, which means medium communication with the, with the deceased people using a middleman, what we call a medium. We're going to see some of those uh, experiments that they did. The third way to prove it's reincarnation. Souls that are transferred from one body into another in different places, in different generations. We're going to prove that. We're going to speak about regression, which means hypnotizing people and regress them to the time before they came to the world and finding them speaking in foreign languages that they themselves do not know what they're saying when they see the video later on. So it's going to be very interesting. And then there's one more way, is leaving normal people like us that living here in a test with a free choice and one day something happened that they wake up and there are two souls living in one body. Until today it was Ruven and from now on is Ruven and Shimon living in one box. How do we know? Very simple. Now sometimes Ruven is speaking from his throat and sometimes Shimon speaking from his thought. And it could be sometimes two different languages, two different voices. It's sometimes even a male and a female. That one hour he speaks like a man, and an hour later a woman speaks from the same thought. And we're going to see how is it possible. And if we have time, we will, we'll explain why does it happen. Now, according to science, 